Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Government panics as EU border controls expose NHS to an influx of migrants. EU funds web browser button to add flag as terrorist to web browsers. French and German pig farmers under the EU cosh for breaching new welfare guidelines. Cash for clash, the EU pledges further financial support to Mali. And the FUD circus resurrects fossils to quash rise of popular opinion for Britain's independence from the EU. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, fears are rising that removal of restrictions on migration for Bulgarian and Romanian citizens will result in a massive influx of migrants into Britain. The potential for inundating an already struggling NHS is a key fear, and ministers are already scrambling to find ways to circumvent EU legislation that will force Britain to fund social and health care for all comers. The EU has already produced video material promoting the rights of Romanian and Bulgarian migrants and legislation highlighted here at the unit early last week sets out the EU's desire to enforce social welfare for all across EU nations. This report has the details in depth and you can find supporting articles in our legislation section. Watch out, web lovers. If you think adding a plus one on your followers' comments or liking your friend's Bovril page is cool, then you're going to love the EU's flag as a terrorist button. I can see it now. This will reinvent the whole Facebook status and getting flag as a terrorist will be the latest must-have. Really, this whole legislative machine has just lost the plot when it comes to technology. Befuddled by the corporate lobby lobbyists, our Eurocrats are lost without a clue. The brainiacs in Brussels are going to get this all completely wrong, and in a very, very big way. My suggestion is read this article to convince yourself of their complete lack of sanity, and then go and sign up as a member of the Free Software Foundation. I reported on this story at the beginning of the year in the context of British farmers who had gone to great expense to implement the new working methods to accommodate the EU ban on sow stalls, only to find that, as usual, the rest of Europe largely hadn't bothered. Well, this article looks at what our Eurocrats are planning to do about it. This article details the who's following and who's flouting the rules. Needless to say, the end result will be increased prices for all. Of course, attention is being drawn towards the crisis in Mali, and it seems our political leaders have in mind a new deep and prolonged crisis. David Cameron talking of an iron resolve in a battle that may take years or decades. This story in our top 10 section looks at the huge sums of money already granted to Mali under the European Development Fund, and a further commitment for an additional 50 million euros. The strategy here, of course, is twofold. One, it's being used as a media distraction to move the focus away from the imploding EU economies. And two, this is a further extension to the silent takeover that has been accelerating in Africa as the EU, USA and China all vie for access and claim on the natural resources there. I assure you, you have far from heard the last of this tale. Finally, I see the political propaganda machine is really revving up its engines. Having read this latest article, I've decided it's time to stop pulling the punches with my point of view on this load of old twaddle. The UK government, irrespective of denomination, has continued to drive forward the assimilation of Britain into a federal Europe. As Trevor Coleman asserted during our interview, they knew back in the 1960s what the plan was, and even in the face of hard evidence from the British Civil Service that Britons would lose their democratic rights and sovereignty, our politicians still pressed ahead. At each election, we're presented with promises of referendums and of being given a choice only for those promises to be dashed, Blair, Brown and now Cameron. They can only continue this course whilst we allow it. 
Here at the unit, we have no concern for politics. We just want to know the facts about the rules being made and we want you to be the judge and jury of your own destiny. Whether you believe in independence or federalism, surely you have a right to be heard. It's time that everyone knows the facts. Tell your family and tell your friends to come and look at this website for themselves. Sign up for our newsletter and find out what they have planned for us next. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.